Locating Idiobi was first of all a Herculean task. The distance from the heart of Ibadan, their state capital, wasn't much. It was the poor road network that created the delays. We made the exit from the Ife Ibadan Expressway and eventually located our destination, which was on the new airport road. This structure is the primary healthcare facility, catering to over 27,000 residents of Idiobi, an area in Onwara local government area of the state. This is Fawali Primary Healthcare Center. According to the Ward Minimum Healthcare Package of 2007 that prescribes a set of minimum standards for health infrastructure, personnel, drugs and other medical consumables, a primary health clinic is required for every population between 2,000 and 5,000 people and a population between 10,000 and 20,000 is entitled to a primary healthcare centre and with a population of 27,423 serviced by the Fawali Primary Healthcare. One should expect a few health clinics to support this structure, but there isn't any. Let's begin with infrastructure. This is where we used to take delivery. Delivery room. This is where we used to take delivery from. This is where we used to take yeah, okay. So the woman lays down here. Do you put a cloth on this? Uh, marking touch for to prevent the dusty or more depression than you lay the marking touch before anybody will come on this. Yes, we, we need the marking touch. So, the, the first thing about that, we need to be able to Let me now ask, when the baby is born, where do you take the baby? Is this where you receive the newborn? The newborn. The newborn. We will use the uh, mother's clothes to cover these spots before we carry the baby. So, with the uh, mother's clothes, and manage the other one. This is our baby waste cake. It's not what we know. We used to improvise for it. The mother will carry the baby on adult skin. This is our adult skin. Let me tell you. See, it's not sharp in the baby. It's difficult for us to see the ear, to see it clearly. So as the baby is birthed, life, first touch, first contact, first bed for the baby. No. Not directly like that. We take delivery here. When uh, the baby delivers, we will transfer it from here to the suspect delivery. So we will lay another cross here. So by the time we clean up, we pour the baby, we coil the baby, so we will transfer this. So here, this is the place for the baby. Baba Khadija is a resident of Temidire Kbakba Aymaseko, a community of Ethiopia. He's all linked to the area. He leads us to the community leader known as Bale. So, 
It was Baba Kadija who explained to us how the primary healthcare center came into existence in Idiobi. Luckily, on our way out of Bakma Aimasiko, on the set day, we ran into Honorable Olukayode Fayemi, who was being cheered on by residents, and we asked to have a word with him. I built that place, I equipped it with beds, with curtains, with chairs and tables. It was a personal donation. But when I was also given the opportunity to become the chairman of the local government in this area, we actually renovated that place. That is by a little man to the Bawa. You know, she said, be. Tumba do ti she a little man. Fawale Primary Healthcare Center is not the only center in Ibadan and or your state in particular with such structure and operational challenges. We moved away from the west to the far east in a village in Izi local government area. We encountered a center hosted in a town hall facility. This is a primary healthcare center at Ofianku in Izi local government area of Ebonyi State. And indeed, we have come here today to meet it under locks and key. And the people of this community have said that there is a vaccination or immunization exercise going on in the state. Indeed, on our way here, we saw a few officials or personnel that actually went about administering from house to house. I want to very much believe that this is the situation. But it does appear there is a lot more. After making a few failed attempts to talk to residents here, we met with the councillor of the ward. Mm, we have only one staff, and one staff is not enough. Like one staff cannot stay from morning to evening, let alone from night. This place is supposed to work day and night now. They are not here not because they are not in the, in the office, but they want for immunization. In this village, they are here in the village. You can, you, if you check all these children, you can see some of them was painting their finger because they have that oral immunization. I asked him if there was water somewhere close to the facility, as I couldn't spot any water source nearby. We don't have a source of water, even pond. We only have one bungalow in the entire village, which we can go more than three miles before we reach the bungalow. You will meet it at the primary school. That one, one bungalow in that primary, in that primary school there, that is covering the whole village. So it is very, very uh, uh, pathetic for the villagers. We are finding it extremely difficult. Even myself, I'm ashamed for myself, being a councillor, and I'm unable to build a single bungalow. I don't, I don't have the capacity, financial capacity to do that. We returned to Abakliki, the Abonyi state capital, where I asked Dr. Barry Oko, the executive secretary, Abonyi state primary health care board, on the lack of water in over 65% of the facilities in the state. Yes, it is true, but it's not up to 65% we are talking about. And, you know... If you are working with people that are knowledgeable or who know the 
condition the state is in, I think uh, it helps the people to take care of certain things, like this wash, especially water. I know how much our governor has been trying to make sure that every locality has borehole, and then our facilities, not all, because if I say all, I may make a obvious uh, statement. I know it is less than that, 65%, uh, because through our research of station or monitoring, we have found out that more than 65% have uh, water uh, sources and then they have been taking care of the facilities. So we have more than 65% coverage of water. When Dr. Barry Oko said more than 65%, she meant a center like the popular MCH at the heart of the state capital of Bakliki that enjoys a lot of interventions by state and non-state agencies. Mrs. Odo, the officer in charge of the MCH, could not speak with us on our first visit as we were told by members of staff that she's had a busy shift. Today, upon our arrival, she was summoned from her apartment where she had been resting. Actually, we normally take care of ourselves by having little rest whenever you feel that you are tired. For you to regain yourself again, to face another services. And come to the psychological aspect of it, all of us are happy. What makes me happy is the health of people that are coming here. I am only weak when I treat somebody and the outcome is not positive. Like last month now, I have 112 delivery. I was so happy. Do you know why I'm so happy? I didn't lose any of them. And whenever I am seeing the, the, positive, uh, the positive change coming to my uh, services here, it makes me happy. But as a human being, whenever I feel so weak, I normally like to rest. When I rest, I gain myself. Likewise, all my staff, they are doing the same. Like some of them that are not living here. Whenever they go back, as you can see, this morning, they were all here. Some of them that you see yesterday, they were all here now because they have gone home and rest for the night, ready for work again this morning. She also shares on the administration of drugs and treatments. In fact, every two months, they will give us commodity for malaria. If I mean commodity, I mean both the test kits and the malaria drug. And as such, if there is any need for you to collect any money from somebody that has malaria, positive malaria, you will just explain to the person that for the test, governments have paid for it. For the uh, malaria drug, governments have paid for it. But if there is any other thing attached to that malaria, which is the one that governments have not paid, you will explain very well and the person will understand. This is Kudai Primary Healthcare Center. It is located in Tutsi local government area of Chigawa State. The structure houses several wards and a functional solar system, as well as a generating set. Its infrastructures are a lot newer than those visited in Oyo and Ebony states. However, activities here seem to be slow most of the time, as the population serviced is just about 6,000 or it may appear residents here take their own health into their hands. This was a primary health center I was directed to by the Executive Secretary, Primary Health Care Development Agency of the State. It appears to me like a case of putting forth your best food. The question is, do residents across Jigawa State have access 
to a facility like Kudai. This I asked Dr. Kabir Ibrahim, the Executive Secretary of Jigawa State Primary Healthcare Development Agency. When you say well equipped, it's, uh, it's a relative term. Uh, we know all the facilities are working. There are human pe people working with them. Then that is human resource for health deployed to those facilities. We also have some critical equipment that are appropriate for the kind of work they do. But what we want to say is that we have a system that is bound to be improved upon every day. Just a couple of uh, weeks ago, His Excellency the Governor approved the deployment of state-of-the-art equipment to about 31 uh, of such kind of facilities at village level. And each of them was equipped with uh, state-of-the-art uh, beds, you know, all the things that we work during, uh, for instance, maternity activity and all that. Um, so we, we're still having some facilities that require improvement. And that's the reason of governance. If every government, um, if every facility is well equipped, then perhaps we don't even have work to do. And on the issue of access, he has this to say. Uh, in addition to that, government also opened up another portal where we transport women who are having issues related to transportation from their rural communities. Uh, so we sort of map out communities, we call them heartrich settlement. There are about 750 to 1,000 of them across the 26 LGS in the 27 LGS in the state. There's only one LG Hadeja which does not have such kind of communities. Once you are pregnant and then it's time for delivery or you have some complication during the course of your pregnancy, the community leader. Uh, is given some identification cards and then household health asks for those cards and with the issuing of those cards drivers are called and the drivers quick come to your house in front of your house no matter the hour of the day saturday sunday inclusive and they convey these women to health facilities where they are given actually free care for each trip those drivers are paid a minimum of four thousand naira uh, last year 2021 alone we transported 1423 of these women from hatry settlements you will never appreciate what we're talking about until when you live in a place where it has rained, the road is waterlogged, and there are no vehicles. The next available vehicle is four hours away because of the terrain, and the woman is bleeding hugely, and it's 3 a.m. in the night. I asked Elijah Akoji, a journalist who recently did a report on the Jigawa State Primary Health Care, if these claims are true. The government made provisions for some of the, uh, for, uh, for pregnant women to be conveyed to the hospital when they are to deliver. In all honesty, I think the policy is working in some of the health facilities, but I cannot confirm for all. Um, some of these uh, primary health care centers still lack some of the basic things that are supposed to make it um, an accessible um, health facility. Some of these primary health care centers are still um, uh, are this, uh, in a pitiable state, to say. Back in your state, we went in search of answers to why the kind of Fawale Primary Health Care Center would exist at all. The Executive Secretary of your State Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Muidin Olatunji, was not available, but he directed us to Dr. Oshuku, who was at the time coordinating a training for healthcare workers close to the ancient Oyo town. We located him. For me, the question was, what criteria were used in selecting 200 healthcare centers in the state that had a center like Fawoli left unattended? Now, one of the criteria that uh, was considered in putting up this is population to serve. The, the volume of clients that that facility is actually seeing on the average. And you now want to say, okay, this facility is serving large number of people. Let us renovate it and, and make it be more productive in terms of services that is providing for people. The, the basic acquisition fund has a criteria for selection. We, we call it accreditation criteria, uh, provisional accreditation, and then eventually a complete accreditation for them to actually participate fully. Okay. Now, a, a set of facilities who have uh, fulfilled that they are already enjoying that now but that is not to say that that's the only set of facility that would go do that you understand and now this care provision fund is starting on one per ward now but is going to extend to all the facilities now if i only had qualified for busy health care provision fund that would have been another help you know to that facility because for that 
we would have been able to put in a, a, a midwife in that place and probably some little little other support staffs who also come up under the basic care provision fund for those uh, uh, facilities. The healthcare financing in your state has various sources of income. One of them is the basic health care provision fund that you have just said. I'd like to remind you also that your state is in, uh, involved in uh, health care um, health insurance, insurance where we also source uh, funding for health. And apart from that, there are statutory allocation that comes from the local government to the Plan Health Care Board, and that's about 7.5%. In 2001, heads of government in Africa agreed to allocate 15% of their national budgets to the health sector, an event that is referred to as the Abuja Declaration. Nigeria today struggles to fulfill the obligation as only 4.97% of the 2022 budget goes to the health sector, with 73% of this allocation going to salaries and office running costs. This is according to the International Center for Investigative Reporting. Fawale Healthcare Center is the outcome of this action or inaction of the government. Voluntary staff over seven years. You have salary, we that's about to to one center. The day she sent her in the Kalati Bawa, she shared my girl, a car, Kirin, job out, Tigbawa, and Bawa, she shared, but it's thrice in Yapo found will do low staff. Just five in number. Oh, late she, who she, who so much. I want Bawa, you see, Debbie? Yes, now. Now, see one bit of she shared. Two old Bassalari. I don't want any, no, seven years since here, the Tosi one be. Papa next morning. Oh, to close. There is a uh, 30 uh, primary aid center in our local government with one medical doctor, which used to circulate all that center by visiting the health center once in a week for each health center. But for this uh, family primary aid care, we have five staff and 21 voluntary staff. If there is anti malaria drug available, we used to give them freely. We used to give them. Even if there is not an anti malaria alone, maybe an anesthetic paracetamol cough syrup. If we have, if government supplies us, so we used to give everybody. But the rate that we usually receive is not enough for the patient we attended to. If, if they're supposed to sleep overnight, they will reduce due to the condition of this health center. They will say, ah, malaria term will be well, 25 in the market, but you'll be late. There was to we call a minimum service package, which we we say if we call a facility a facility, if at all it answers its name as a health facility, especially publicly owned, it should be able to provide a minimum service package. Indeed. So what are we really missing here? So primary health care now is not catering for the designed 70% population. Why? Because it has not received the attention it deserves. The facilities, first, they are not adequate in number. Okay? The few we have, they don't look good to attract people, so people don't have confidence. The infrastructure dilapidation is there. Not only that, the staffing are not adequate in number, as well as are not also adequate in skills. Commodities and supplies are also not as desired. So you can see where you have a facility that is supposed to function to 75% and run 24 hours. With this kind of deficiency, there is no way. So instead of the facility to run 74, uh, 24 hours, you, they would end up closing just the way I'm also closing in my office. So they are, they are at most called offices, not actually uh, health centers. I have to admit, Dr. Abdullahi Garba is spot on 
with his assessment of the problems on ground. But considering that just 1% of the Consolidated Revenue Fund expected to be remitted by the federal government for the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund is not even fully provided, his position on government's effort isn't. With the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, together with the input uh, from the National Health uh, Insurance Agency, uh, I think the government is doing very, very, very much reasonable intervention to ensure that a reasonable level of health care is provided to the majority of Nigerians to be able to live a good, reasonable life. If this crib is the value our government places on a new life, with no drugs, no electricity, to power health facilities, with members of staff having to contribute monthly to offset their power bills, then we have to agree that we have work to do. State government came here in the year 2020, that is two years back. They inspected these health facilities and its surroundings, and they promised to come back, but they have seen what they are here for. Later, they came back last year around August. Even they ask our guy about what we need. Family requires urgent attention. I think that's a take home for me and that's exactly what I'm going to discuss with the ES of Royal State Health Healthcare Board that Fawali needs urgent attention. Maybe it will make uh, become very nice to go and revisit it and actually have our own assessment you know, of the situation and see okay what do we think could be done within the shortest time for this facility you know, to regain it fully. As the people of Fawali may be hopeful for a change, may I remind you that we're nothing without health and the accessibility of a working healthcare to the frailest, poorest and basest in our society will not only mean equity, it will mean development.